Great. Welcome to Digital Asset News, Think of Top Stories in Crypto, and bring on bite-sized pieces. Today, just as uh, the thumbnail and the title suggest, there's a lot of things going on with Russia, and uh, they are taking the next big step. So what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at uh, how Russia banks are adding a DFA manager. These are the central banks that are adding this. And this is uh, pretty interesting, just how fast everything is moving along. Also, we'll take a look at a new U.S. bill. And this one's actually positive uh, for crypto and digital assets. And lastly, we'll take a look at a poll which I uh, put out on Twitter called How Much to Retire. So, and then lastly, we'll do a quick Q&A. So hold your questions till the end. And uh, as you may notice, uh, my green screen today has people in the background. And uh, that's just uh, life. It's how it is. Very hard to get actual people in the background of your green screen. Very tough. But uh, we were able to pull it off here at uh, D News. So enjoy it. All right. So before we get into all this stuff, uh, let's take a look at the market. And if you're watching live, welcome. Thanks for coming in. If you're watching the replay, just know that uh, the news segment takes around 10 or 15 minutes or so, and then uh, the rest of it's just Q&A. So I put timestamps below so you can skip, skip out of the things you like or don't like because eh, we're trying to uh, save you time. So having said that, let's jump right in. So first off, let's take a look at what's going on into our market. And right now it's 11 uh, a.m. here in uh, Puerto Rico time, so that means it's 10 a.m. Uh, Eastern, so the markets are open. And I don't know what the markets have done. I haven't checked it out yet. Uh, we'll get to that. But I'm guessing that uh, it was a good day because it's a because it's a good day over here. We're at 1.8 trillion, so we're we're kind of teetering on that two trillion. Man, I cannot wait for that to actually happen. Back to two trillion. Remember when we had three trillion? Ah, it was just not so long ago. And now here we are below two. And uh, welcome to crypto if you're new. That's called a Friday. All right, so Bitcoin's up a little bit. Ethereum, monstrous 24 hours, 8.2%. That's great, 2,800. Binance Coin, Cardano, Solana is up 7.4% uh, after that wormhole hack. Uh, and you can uh, take a look at, if you don't know, there's a gentleman named CTO Larson. And if you look in uh, my description, uh, I've added him to one of the YouTubers I watch pretty much every day. And CTO Larson's got a really great background. So watch his video about uh, the wormhole hack and how that all happened, how easy it was to prevent. And uh, now, uh, what was it? Circle, <laughs> Crypto Circle, uh, or Circle Crypto, whatever their names are. Uh, they came in and just said, here's $300 million. And I've had many discussions offline with people. Some people say this is a marketing scheme. Some people say that this is a, a white, a white, uh, hat hacker who just wanted some money. And some people just say that it's just all, it's all a scam. doesn't matter. Uh, I can just tell you that uh, $300 million to come across is not easy. And that uh, got put back. So uh, it is what it is. All right. So here's what we have for the, our market looking pretty good. I don't know what's happening in the traditional space. We'll take a look at it. But there was two stories that uh, struck me. First of all, is Amazon, surprise, surprise, their, stocked, their, their stock soared 15%. I think after their earnings call, they said they went up like 40% or something like that. So the stock rose 15%. What's crazy to me is that they're going to hike the prime membership. They're like, hey, we made a bunch of money. And guess what? We're going to uh, increase the prime membership. And you know what else? Everybody's going to pay for it, even me. So let's not even, let's call a spade a spade. If Amazon's been like, hey, you need to pay more for prime? No problem. And here it is. A lot of people are like, I won't. Yeah, right. Uh, tell me in a couple of weeks after a while. I, I'm pretty sure 90% of people will do that. But that helps the traditional finance space. But this one uh, to, takes it down a notch where Meta suffered the largest one-day wipeout in U.S. corporate history. Its valuation slumped by nearly $240 billion. This was uh, This was written yesterday. And so there's two conflicting things. So let's see how the market did. I haven't seen this. I've got yesterday's up. So maybe it, maybe my theory is correct that it's correlated. Maybe it's not. Eh, correlation. All right. So the last, this it opens up at 930. You can see it uh, went up. So they're not too concerned about that. The NASDAQ was down yesterday. Let's do a little quick refresh, see where it's at. Of course, it's up. So yeah. So again, S&P 500 and NASDAQ, it's all correlated to what's going on with our market. And not that I'm super ecstatic about it, but that's how the cookie crumbles. So let's all root together and uh, hopefully we can all make some good money. So that's what we have for the traditional markets. Let's roll in to the big story. And the big story, Russia banks 
at a DFA manager. First of all, what's a DFA manager? Before we get to that, let's, I'm going to take you down a little trip, trip down memory lane about how fast things are going. And actually, before I do that, I want to throw up one comment before we even get started. This was, I was perusing the chats and uh, guitar player Nora said this, interesting news from Reuters, Russia has agreed to a 30 year contract to supply gas to China via new pipeline, pipeline and will settle the new gas sales in euros. Interesting. I'm gonna tell you why that is in a second. So Russia here proposes a ban on the use and money of crypto. This is on January 20th. And we had covered this and it's always good to not be a thumbnail investor or a headline investor because Russia didn't propose this ban. It was the central banks of Russia that proposed the ban, not Russia. And Russia came out and said, like again, no, we're not gonna do that, Russia banks. You're not, your job isn't to set, press, it's to set law. That's the parliament. So on January 25th, they came out and said, you know what, Russia should regulate crypto market, not ban it. This was from not just some Joe Blow off the street. That was from finance ministry official Ivan uh, Chebezikov. Ah, I'm pretty sure I nailed that one. Anyhow, and then moving forward to yesterday, Russia's Minister of Finance suggests letting banks sell crypto. So not only they're like, hey, central banks, not only we're not going to ban it, but you're actually going to sell it to all your different banks that are out there. Now, central banks are different from uh, commercial banks, so, but they're all kind of interrelated. And then in the same day, this just came out. I thought this was funny. Russia banks are like, okay, but okay, boss. Russia, Russian bank deploys first digital asset manager. That is what we're talking about here. So this is the story. Uh, yesterday, late at night, just, just broke. The Bank of Russia announced the appointment of uh, Atomize as the first company in the country to be put, let me blow this up, on the central bank's list of approved digital asset operators. Further, the registration enables Atomize to provide its users with an opportunity to use digital financial assets, DFAs. That's a weird way to say it, digital financial assets, but sure, on its platform, as well as procure new types of assets in the tokenized form. That's interesting because I've always been a big believer that everything will be tokenized. Real estate will be tokenized, land will be tokenized, art will be tokenized, everything will be tokenized and people will be able to own a share of that. So that's big business. But why? Why would they get into that? Because wouldn't that mean that they would give up a, a lot of their power? No, no, not at all. Well, a little bit, but uh, in order to further develop the DFA, the, again, digital financial assets, the Bank of Russia has formulated proposals for improving the regulated regulation of such assets and their taxation. Let me read that one more time. In order to further develop the DFA, the Bank of Russia has formulated proposals for improving the regulation of such assets and their taxation. Because here's the thing, there's an avalanche of money moving into crypto. And if you're a government, there's a couple of things you want to do if you're not America. First of all, you want to get, get money in on those taxes. There's a reason why marijuana was legalized throughout a large part of the United States, whether that be medicinal or recreational. It's because they're missing out on a ton of money. That's really what it came down to. And now here's the same thing. So there's twofold here. If you're Russia, you're like, or any country and for that matter, you're like, well, we can't really stop that flow. It's like putting our hole in the dam. Let's just regulate this, give people what they want, and regulate the living tar out of them. That's what it is. That's what it is. Now, the second thing is, is what I think. And this goes back to what guitar player Noah magically said. It's a good point. That China and Russia are working together, which is fine. It's free market for this new pop pipeline. And we'll settle the new gas sales in euros. Because why? Because they want to get off the standard. And the world reserve currency is... You guessed it, the U.S. dollar. So if you want to get out of the U.S. dollar and avoid sanctions and all that stuff, be pretty easy to do that by embracing crypto and digital assets. Now, the question will be, uh, will they go for central bank digital currencies or CBDCs and transact amongst each other? Well, it's kind of tough because, uh, I mean, do you really trust China to do those things with their digital yuan? Yeah, right. Do you trust Russia with a digital ruble? I don't think so. So uh, at some point, they're going to have to come to an agreement about which could be 
that digital currency, or maybe it could be multiple, or maybe it could be one that's right now. So that is what is left up in the air. But I find it very fascinating that how fast these things moved from first Russia, central banks going, we're going to ban it. Like, no, we're going to regulate it. And you know what? Banks are going to sell it. And guess what? We're going to get a DFA or a digital asset manager in there. So let me know what you think in the comments section. I find this to be positive news as more countries come in and actually accept it. Let's move on to our next piece. And uh, bah, 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 bah. that will be this. There's a new U.S. bill. And I got to tell you, I'm excited for the new U.S. bill because honestly, this America Competes one was trash. Uh, this new one, which, by the way, thanks everybody for coming in there and uh, contacting your representative. But this new one, because we actually got some things reversed. But this new one here, which is the Virtual Currency Tax Fairness Act. I'm just going to read this right real quick. This is from uh, U.S. Congressman, Congresswoman, excuse me, Suzanne Delbin. Pretty sure I said that right. Uh, states today, today, Representative Susan and David uh, Schweikert from Arizona, and she is from Washington, introduced the Virtual Currency Tax Fairness Act. What's that? Well, currently, any gains from virtual currency must be reported as taxable income, regardless of the size or purpose of the transaction. This includes purchases as small as buying a cup of coffee. So that was one of the big questions people asked me about Voyager. Like, hey, we don't understand. If, if Voyager, if they're able to pay for things in, in crypto, also with crypto.com and different places, isn't every transaction a taxable event? Well, yes, in the old way it actually is. So there is that part, that component. But with this new bill, that's going to go away, hopefully. This makes the everyday use of virtual currency near impossible, discouraging people from using it and inhibiting the growth of our digital economy. The Virtual Currency Tax Fairness Act would exempt personal transactions made with virtual currency when the gains are $200 or less. And you can see that, and this is uh, in the exact same thing. Proceeding sentence shall not apply if the, if the gain, which would otherwise be recognized in the transaction, exceeds $200. So again, I think this is, uh, when people look at this, they're like, well, is that really good news? Is that really the, the step we want to take? Sure. I mean, it's not everything you want to take, but everything is baby steps. So when I see something like this come in, I'm like, that's a step in the right direction. That means we can just get a little more wiggle room and do a lot of good things that we want to do as far as with debit cards, putting those into bank accounts, spending cryptocurrency digital assets uh, for merchants who are getting robbed of all the difference, not robbed, but if you're if you're using Stripe or PayPal, it's 2.99% uh, plus 30 cents per transaction. I know because I got to pay that stupid transaction. So if they can use tr uh, cryptocurrency in that way, I think it's a pretty good deal. So let me know what you think about that in the comments section. I think it's a, a step in the right direction. And uh, let's finish off with a little poll action. That didn't come out right. Oh, well. <laughs> so I did this poll. And the question I asked you, it's a pretty reasonable question, I thought, which was, how much cash do you need in your bank account right now to quit your job? I know we're on a crypto channel, digital asset channel. So the question then is, well, yeah. Rob, is, do I really want to have cash? Well, I mean, until that, let's, let's be honest, that bill that just came about, it's only up to 200 bucks. So you're going to still have to pay capital gains tax. So like with this section here, how much do you need to actually uh, quit your job? And I thought when I put this in, I'm like, well, I just put 100,000. I'm like, no one's going to pick 100,000. But it depends on where you're from, right? Different countries are different things. It's not just America. And that's just one of the things that I have a, a problem with is just seeing everything through my vision. And I, I need to get better at that. But $100,000 in a lot of places is a ton of money. Uh, but if you're talking about retiring on $100,000 in California, that's all like... 40% of that is already taxed, so forget it. Then the next one, which is the winner so far, is a million dollars. People think, if I make a million dollars, I can quit my job and do whatever I want to. And there's nuances, and you could, in all honesty. Think of it this way. And this is just investment opinion, not investment advice. But if you took a million dollars and stuck it into a yield-bearing account in crypto, like a Celsius, like a Voyager, and let's say you put it in USDC, a stable coin, 
you know that's 10% roughly per year. So if you have a million dollars, imagine that, you could be making $100,000 roughly per year, 120,000, yeah, roughly every year just on the yield. And so then that's just one part, or you could do investments, or you can get into real estate, or you can, whatever you wanna do, but it could be done. But if you're just living off a million dollars that sits in, the, in your bank account and just gets depreciated because of uh, inflation, I don't think it's, you're gonna make it in America. Now, in other places, yeah, Thailand, psh, live like a king, queen, whatever else you want. The next one was 10 million. And then the other one was there's never enough. And this really comes down to this, is that some people are like, I love my job. I love what I do. I love the things. So I will just tell you, on this channel, I've been talking a lot about uh, the five-year plan, the four or five-year plan, whatever you're investing into now, just kind of kind of don't pay too much attention to it. And just let it sit and ride things out. And I think you'll do pretty well. Investment opinion, not investment advice. That's what I did. My first bull run we talked about, 2017, Portfolio went all the way to the ground. I used dollar cost average till today. And I'm still doing dollar cost averaging. Uh, Cosmos and Algorand and Bitcoin, Ethereum, Chainlink, you know, little stuff. So like these types of things, that's great for the money, but I'm gonna press you on one more thing. There's a difference between the three Fs as I call it. Um, financial freedom and fulfillment. And there's a big, huge difference. I haven't had a job I haven't worked for anybody since 2015. Now I just work for you guys, essentially, really. And that gives me fulfillment. So you have, to, you have to ask yourself, what gives me fulfillment and what is financial freedom? And there's a lot of things that go along that, that spectrum. I'm not gonna talk to you about it right now, but there's a link in the description. It's on my website, danteachescrypto.com. It's a 100% free website. That's why I've got this my banner now that says that Dan teaches crypto.com. Dan is me, digital asset news. Rob is my real name. And you can go there and sign up, it's, it's free, but read that, that blog post. You just click on blog when you get there and it's right there. And I go through the pitfalls and trials and tribulations. I know people are like, well, that's a nice problem to have, but it, it, uh, it can be, and there's a lot of different issues that can come about that. So just uh, check that out. And I just thought it was an eye-opening uh, poll. So thanks for taking it. Anyhow, so that's it. So right now, that takes care of the news part. If you don't want to stick around for the Q&A, see you later. Thanks for coming out. I appreciate it. If you want to stick around for the Q&A, we can go any deeper into that poll. But let me know your questions, and let's get into that right now. Let me get rid of this. Awesome. Okay. Ah. Oh. <laughs> I bet the guy cleaning the pool behind you wants to retire. Maybe. Raul seems like uh, he's a hustler, good guy. And that's just a green screen. You guys know that, right? Let's see. Yes, everybody, I'm getting, there is the pool cleaner right there, right? Here's a good comment. I'm trying to dollar cost average, but it's hard when you have kids to support. Oh, I, trust me, trust me. Yeah, it's not easy. It isn't. And I'm not going to tell you something stupid like, uh, you know, well, it's just because you just don't, because you go to Starbucks too much or you buy that really expensive phone or something like that. I'm not going to, not going to tell you that because some things are essential. And if you want those things, you want those things. However, you know, in all honesty, uh, just little stuff really adds up. And I will tell you any money that you have in your bank account, this is what I do. I just, I look at the money every, these days I look at money and I look at it and I go, what is it doing for me? It's not working for me. Like if, if I go to bed, do I have more money than when I went to sleep? And the answer is no, for what the money's sitting there, I do something else. And that's how it is. Oh, shoot. Thanks for reminding me. So Travis makes a good point with the tremendous mustache. And he says, uh, hey, we'll take a day off. I need to take it. Uh, but see, that's just it. Financial freedom versus fulfillment. This is fun to me. Like, this is fun times. Like, I get to come here every day. And I get to talk to you. You guys can ask me questions and I can help you out. Financial freedom versus fulfillment. I don't need to do it. It's just fun. And uh, sometimes, like, before I was doing the non-live streams, those were difficult. But these live streams are super simple. You just put things together and then, bleh, out it goes. But there is one thing. Uh, today, 
thank you, Travis, for reminding me, is that uh, we're going to be on Ben's channel for DCA. Shoot. That's at, uh, that's in four and a half hours. That's 4 p.m. Atlantic Standard Time, my time zone. And it's 3 p.m. Eastern, uh, 2 Central, 1 Mountain, and High Noon Pacific Time. So it will be me, Ben, from Into the Cryptoverse, and James from Invest Answers. Should be a good one. Maybe I'll ask James about Solana. See what he says about that. Da da da. All right. Will we get it rejected for 39? That's a great question for Ben. Ben's uh, the TA master. I'll ask him. Ada is a buy at a quarter. I believe that is very true. Thanks. My job will not pay me $1 million in my whole life. Exactly. That's exactly how I feel too. And that's why I stopped working for somebody else because I knew trading my time for money would never work. I just saw an article today. It was the difference between, let me blow this up, healthcare workers who have a traditional uh, work at the hospital or a clinic, whatever else, how much they make being employed versus how much they make as they get for traveling nurse. And there was a traveling nurse and uh, this guy made like, I think it was like 861 bucks per week after taxes, just in his regular job. Once he went to travel nursing, he made $3,722 per week. So like that works out pretty well. But again, will you make all the money that you need in your entire life working with somebody else? Probably not. Uh, I think that's why it's an imperative to get into some kind of investments, whatever those may be. And there's, there's plenty out there. Ooh, Jay says, I've unbanked myself. No money in the bank. Excellent. Very nice. Entangler says pre-recorded. No, this is live. Ah, ah, we're breaking out. We're going to 40K. Well, let's hope so. <laughs> Rob, wake up. Bitcoin is pumping. Let's see. 7% in 24 hours. We might actually get 40 let me refresh this. Close. Yeah, it's good when it pumps. But remember, here's the thing that I, I need to remind everybody. Remember, remember that it's great to buy those dips and get into those positions, but it's also great to take profits. And nobody ever went broke taking profits. Uh, and I think that's one of those lessons that I learned concretely in this bull run. Uh, that if you don't do those things, uh, you just ride things all the way up. You ride things all the way down. And you're like, what the hell happened? Just, uh, just what I had done. Uh, yeah. Gabor says, at least you guys actually make money and still can invest working jobs in the U.S. Here in Eastern Europe, you're not that lucky. Yeah, I've heard there's a lot of different places that there are no jobs. There's no jobs available out there. Any thoughts on energy web token? I wanted it dumps. What? Yeah. Ugh, it's bad today. Thoughts on news updates about Bitcoin Layer 2 Light Network? I haven't heard anything about it yet. So uh, we'll see how it goes. But um, I mean, as far as I, well, aren't I think they're trying to make it a little bit more uh, faster and more regulation, not regulation, um, uh, updates to the system. No, I was thinking of, uh, of, of Chivo, the, the wallet in El Salvador. They're getting another company to actually overhaul the whole thing. That's what I read. It is rain. This will be the last one. Let's get out of here. Rob, after losing your initial six dig digits, how much did you DCA each month? You picked my comment some time ago and it really cleared me up because it's the exact situation. Well, first of all, if you have a partner, you have to be honest with them and said, hey, sweetheart, bad news. All that money that I put into crypto, it uh, would drop by like 80, 90%. Just letting you know. And uh, thankfully, I didn't put our life savings into it. So it's okay. That's what I told my wife. And I'm going to start dollar cost averaging in the future. 
because I think that's a better strategy. She said, okay. So what did I do? Well, first of all, uh, I didn't do it initially because I was so angry that everybody lied to me because John McAfee told me Bitcoin was going to a million and he would never lie. So yeah, that's the thing. And I was like, you know what I felt like? A clown. I was like, geez. I was like, I can't believe this. I just lost all my money. Clowned. I got clowned. But really what happened uh, is I went and I said, okay, I stopped for about a month or two months and I wouldn't even look at the market. So it was so ticked off. And then I got back into it. I started a dollar cost average. The first one was, you know who helped me get back into it was Digital Asset Investor. And he was big on XRP. And I started getting XRP. I thought, well, that makes sense. And then uh, I followed some other people around and uh, I was like, well, you know, Bitcoin, Ethereum could still be a pretty solid place. So I would put in like 25 bucks a week on XRP. Then I would put like 25, then I added 25 bucks into Bitcoin because it was down to like 5,000 bucks. I was like, okay, 25 bucks a week, 100 bucks a month. Again, very angry. And then as time went on, I learned this thing about dynamic BCA, which was I would put a little bit more as when we really dropped off and it would kind of increase it. So if I put in 25 bucks for a week, if it dropped, you know, I think I had a rule like over 10%, I would double it up. If it dropped 20%, I would triple. And uh, that's how it worked out. So it wasn't that much to begin with, but it, over time, uh, I got a little more comfortable because I was just dollar cost averaging in this, in this channel where it was just a little bit and it wasn't too big of swings. And I was like, well, that's okay. I can deal with that. And then over time, then, then it was, then it started to be a hundred bucks, 500 bucks a day and things like that. So. Uh, Jasper's got a good point. I don't uh, understand the depressive feelings about Bitcoin and crypto. We all know it'll go back to what it was and over within three years, all you need is wait. And that's a great point, but I will remind everybody, I always talk about the dash assault. Let me show you what I'm talking about. And let me bring this up. Jasper's right, though. I mean, Bitcoin's going to come back. You know why? Because there's so many institutions and hedge funds and all those players that want to get into it. They'll get into it. Um, come on. There we go. So like salt, not, not everything will come back. And that's why sometimes it's just important just to get into something boring, like a Bitcoin, like an Ethereum, which is still traditional players pretty crazy. This is salt over, is this 24 hours? Yeah, okay. I don't care about that. So I got an assault because I thought it was going to be a great lending platform. And it rocketed up to over 14 bucks, 15 bucks, $15.38. And I bought it somewhere around here. And then look at this, 73 cents, 64. Even if you dollar cost averaged from here, it'd be very hard to get back up here. There was a slight bump back in May when it went to 80 cents. Ooh, watch out but it's been pretty flat and different problems with the SEC and management and things like that. So that's just one of those things where like, that's not a, a project that you're like, oh, I'm just gonna keep dollar cost averaging forever until it comes back. That's not how it works. And then Dash is doing pretty, actually pretty good. But if we take a look at the max, I mean, here was its all time high. If it came and get the all time high after this monster bull run, like what kind of prospects do we have? So. Again, this was over a thousand bucks. It was almost 1500 bucks. And now you're looking at under a hundred bucks over time. I mean, you could probably write it out, but there's a lot better place. So I would say you can dollar cost average, but not everything is coming back. And I call that the dash assault. Hope that makes sense for everybody. All right. Uh Oh, I know. I know McAfee wouldn't be right in his bet, but I feel more triggered over plan B. Yeah, everybody's really ticked off at plan B. But it's because we believed into it, right? And we didn't question it because it was the greatest uh, stock to flow ratio of all time. Well, it was his. And uh, we just let it slide. And uh, now we know that, just like Ben says over in the cryptoverse, all models are correct until they're not. Uh, Visa and Mascara in the game. Look, Visa has been in the game forever. You don't understand how they do not want to get blockbuster in this. They've, we just covered this. I mean, their deal with uh, USDC, their deal, I think they have with, with Avalanche. 
don't quote me on that one. There's a, there's a bunch of different big players in blockchain that are partnering up with Visa, and it's not even funny. There's so many things out there that they're doing with them because they're like, look, we're a payments processor, but we can get our tail kicked in by these new projects. So they're they know the writings on the wall, and they're smart. Yeah, VGX is awesome, making 7%. It is awesome. You know what would be even more awesome? If my price prediction would have came true. <laughs> that was the wackiest one I ever had. And I learned a learned a, a good lesson. doesn't matter how great the team is and how things are going out. Nobody knows where things are going. So just be careful. And the only way to be careful is DCA in and out and take profits. Uh No, I'll give you a Travis. I'll, I'll give you a, a price prediction right now on Cardano. Check this out. Cardano. The price of Cardano in 2022 will be between one dollar and a dollar twenty-five. So let me say that again. The price of Cardano price prediction right here between a dollar and a dollar twenty-five. And you know what that means moon we're going to the moon dollar 25 no problems and that's it uh, i think that's go oh, we got going on. okay <laughs> sniff steve Ehrlich will screw all of you just watch just you watch I don't censor anybody on my channel unless they're a scammer or a spammer. So, hey, you know what? From what I've seen from Steve and Voyager, seems to be pretty good. But could they screw everybody? Well, I don't put anything beyond anybody. Uh, I trust very few people. And uh, that's why I've done it so well. <laughs> so who knows? Uh, I don't personally know that that's happened, but uh, you never know. Something could just come out and Steve's like, ah, I got to shut the whole thing down. Let's be Travis talking about Flux, Luxo, and Telos. How about helping the little man get rich? There you go. It's the best it is. Uh, that's all. All right. So there's oh, there was one more. Where to go? I just saw it. Okay, this is it. Dwayne The Rock. Wow. Mark Zuckerberg about to put the 200 billion on Bitcoin he removed from Meta. So I will just tell you this. I, it's not a question, but it's a comment. I think that uh, any big name institution that gets into Bitcoin, that's all we need. That's just a little bit of gas on this already fire that's kind of just slowly being stoked. And I think it'd be big. If Microsoft comes out, Tesla comes back to the fold, if uh, Jeff Bezos said, hey, you know what? We're really getting big into crypto and uh, they're talking about it. Then, yeah, it could be big. All right. So that's it. And uh, that's it for today. So first of all, uh, thanks for stopping by. I appreciate it. If you like today's video, give it a thumbs up and a like. Uh, if you're watching the replay, I'm going to put a video here and here so you can uh, continue watching to your heart's desire of whatever else we got going on. That's it. Thanks so much for watching. I appreciate it. See you on the next one. Let's help these guys. Jeez.